Here we're going to look at a proof of the existence of irrational numbers, or I should say a certain irrational number that dates way back to the year 470 BC. And it uses this nice diagram involving these embedded pentagrams, or these like stars inside of each other. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So we've got this outside star, which I have in white. And then inside of the inner pentagon, I have this other star, which is in yellow. And then inside the inner pentagon of the yellow star, I have this magenta star inscribed. And then, well, I've cut it off at that point, but you can imagine this going on forever. So we've got this endless embedding of pentagrams, in other words, stars, inside of the inner pentagon of the previous star. So the irrational quantity that we'll get at is the ratio of this length AB to this length BN. So observe here, this length AB is like the length of one of the arms, if you will, of the pentagon or the pentagram. And then BN is this like remaining part of that line segment. Okay, so how might we do this proof? Well, with a lot of classic proofs of the existence of irrational numbers, we'll do it by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that AB over BN is a rational number. Okay. But then what does that mean? That means that we can fix some sort of measurement. So let's say that a measurement of this situation so that A, B, and B, N are natural numbers. Well, or in other words, they're natural number multiples of whatever unit of measurement we've chosen. But I should say here that the ability to find a unit of measurement so that these are natural number multiples of that unit of measurement relies on this assumption up here that this ratio AB over BN is a rational number. And I guess I should point out here that that is going to lead us to a contradiction. We're working towards a contradiction here. Okay. Now, next up, what I'd like to do is note a couple of equalities. So what are those equalities? Well, notice that AB is the same thing as the length of AQ. Well, I think that's pretty clear because notice here we have AB, here we have AQ. And well, this is a regular pentagram. So I guess I didn't say that explicitly, so I'm doing that now. This is a regular pentagram. Okay, and then furthermore, we have QM is equal to BR. So let's see where that is. So here we have QM and here we have BR. And that follows because this inner pentagram is also regular. And then well, I'm going to complete this into a string of four equalities by claiming that AQ is the same thing as QM. So let's maybe argue that. So here we have AQ is the same thing as QM. And that follows because triangle ABQ is similar to triangle QMR. Observe they don't share a side, but they definitely share a side length, this QB and this MR. But then you can also prove that all of the angles from these triangles are equal just via some angle chasing. Maybe I'll leave that as a homework exercise. But then putting that all together, we can get that those two are congruent triangles, making this last equality true. So now let's make another observation. Now let's notice that BM is equal to MR. And that's because in the inner part of any regular pentagram, you have a regular pentagon. And those are sides of that regular pentagon. And now I'm gonna extend this a little bit. So let's observe that triangle CMR is isosceles. So again, that's like another uh, pretty simple homework exercise that you can do. But if triangle CMR is isosceles, 
then MR has the same length as CR. So I'm gonna extend this over here to C times R. Now, from these observations, we will start building our contradiction. So the length of BM is the same as the length of BN minus the length of AB. Okay, well, notice that kind of obviously the bink is the length of BN minus the length of MN. So I think that's pretty clear because what we're essentially doing is taking this longer line segment and subtracting off a subsegment. And that leaves us the length of, well, the complement subsegment, if you will. But next up, again, because we have a regular pentagram, length MN is the same thing as length AB, so we'll make that replacement in this equation. So we have this is BN minus AB, which is a natural number. Okay, so we've got this new natural number quantity. So I guess I should like be clear here. So we built our units so that AB was a natural number and BN had the length of a natural number. And then, well, via this argument that we just made, this length BM is also natural number length. And now let's make our next calculation. And that is that the length BC is equal to the length BR minus the length CR. Again, that's just taking an entire line segment, subtracting a subsegment, and getting the length of what I'm calling the complement subsegment. But look up here, we made some calculations already that the length of BR was the same thing as the length of AB, so we can make that replacement. And the length of CR was the same thing as the length of BM, so we can make that replacement. Good. But then we assumed that AB was a natural number way up here, and we just showed that BM was also a natural number. So here we're subtracting two natural numbers, and well, we're gonna get a natural number. I guess I should say here that we're clearly not getting zero from the difference of these two natural numbers. We're also not getting a negative number because as we move through this, we're always doing a subtraction in the order so that the length of, for instance, AB is clearly larger than the length of BM. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So up here, we see that AB is a natural number. So that's the length of this leg. And then we just used that and, well, all of our construction over here to show that BC was a natural number. Notice that's the length of this portion of the inner um, or the maybe first level inner pentagram. And now notice that we could similarly do this to get down here to CD is also a natural number. So let's maybe write it like this. So similarly, the length of CD is also a natural number. And then, well, remember that we've got infinitely many pentagrams inside of each other, nested inside of each other, and through this argument over and over and over again, we can get the side length of each of these pentagrams are all natural numbers. So let's maybe sketch out in red what we know have natural number length. So here we have this A to B is a natural number. And then we know this B to C is a natural number, this C to D, and then so on and so forth. That's something gonna go for on and on and on. So in other words, what do we have? We have an infinite decreasing sequence of natural numbers. And so, and that sequence goes like this. Length AB has gotta be bigger than length BC, which is bigger than length CD, which is bigger than length, what we'll call DE, where E is on the next level of pentagram that we don't see, and then so on and so forth. And that is our contradiction because we have constructed something that does not exist. So going way up here to our assumption, since this assumption led to a contradiction, we know that this assumption is not true. In other words, we have this ratio AB over BN is irrational. 
Now, let's finish this off by finding out which irrational number it is. Okay, so now, like I said before, we're gonna finish this off by figuring out, well, which irrational number is this AB over BN? And we're gonna do that with the following observation, or this starts with the following observation, and that is the triangle ABO is similar to the triangle AON. So now let's observe that these triangles do not exist on the picture right now. Observe that ABO is this thing that I'm outlining in brown. Okay, so there we've got triangle ABO. And then triangle AON is this one that's being outlined in purple. Okay, nice. So those two are similar. So I won't check that. Again, I think that's a nice homework exercise. And then furthermore, we also know the following, and that is that AO is the same length as BN. But then by the similarity, we have the follow following equivalence of ratios. AO over AB must be equal to AN over AO. But then we can rewrite this AO as BN, so I'm just gonna extend it off here. So we have BN over AB. Okay, nice. But next up what I'm gonna do is take AN and decompose it as AB plus BN. Let's see what that's gonna leave us with. So we have AB plus BN all over this BN. Here I'm making this second replacement of AO with BN is equal to BN over AB. Okay, nice. But now let's go ahead up here and we'll set X equal to our ratio AB over BN. And then we'll turn the equation that we've just built into an equation for X. So observe here we have AB over BN, that'll be X, plus we have BN over BN. Well, that's clearly gonna be one, equals, well, BN over AB, that'll be 1 over X. Now, we can multiply through by X, and we'll have X squared, and then plus X equals 1, but I'm going to move that 1 over, and we have X squared plus X minus 1 equals 0, and that'll leave us with X equals negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, where I took the plus sign here because otherwise we would have like some sort of negative number, which clearly doesn't make sense for a ratio of two lengths. And there we have it. Not only did we look at a really old argument that this ratio AB over BN is irrational, but we were also pretty easily able to calculate which irrational number it was. And notice that this irrational number is related to the golden ratio. In fact, you can check that it's the reciprocal of the golden ratio. And that's a good place to stop.